So like, this is a general video, which is like a general overview on the types of peritonitis. I'll still take each of the types of peritonitis, which is basically what secondary peritonitis, then primary peritonitis, then secondary peritonitis. Primary peritonitis is just a simple lecture, which is basically you are trying to look at a type of peritonitis, which the cause, the primary cause is from the peritoneum itself. Okay. Then for the secondary peritonitis, you are trying to see things like if there's inflammation of an abdominal structure, it causes peritonitis. If there's, peri if there's perforation of an abdominal structure, it can cause peritonitis. If there's um, obstruction of the stoma or gastrointestinal tract, like intestinal obstruction, which can cause secondary peritonitis and all that. So if there's penetrating abdominal wounds and all that. So those ones, we have multiple lectures on them. All right. I think that's the part that will even make this peritonitis series long. Okay, but it's actually good. All right. So everybody knows what peritonitis is, right? That's inflammation of the peritoneum, which is the tissue that actually lines the abdominal contents. Okay. Uh, so the first type of peritonitis that we'll be looking at is the primary one. After we're done looking at the primary one, then we go into the secondary ones. All right. Then in-depth lectures on the secondary causes of secondary peritonitis will come subsequently. This is an overview lecture. So for the primary peritonitis, we said that this one, the infection arises primarily in the peritoneum. It is not something outside that is causing the peritoneum to become inflamed. The thing, the cause is right there with you. Do you understand? It is actually uncommon. Because most of the times before the peritoneum becomes inflamed, it must be something outside causing it, okay? So it's usually in young girls that are between 10 to 3 to 10 years, and occasionally it occurs in boys, right? It is caused by streptococcus pneumonia and streptococcus what pyogenes. There is lower abdominal pain, there's fever, there's toxemia, that's presence of toxins in blood. There's a tender abdomen, there's muscle garden in the lower parts, okay? If you touch the place, the muscles will seem so tense like that, right? So diagnosis is what intraoperatively, that's when you do an exploratory laparotomy, all right? So when you do an uh, uh, exploratory laparotomy, you find out that there's no primary disease or there's no, uh, there's no primary disease of a viscous. That means what? It's not an organ in the abdomen that is causing the peritoneum to become inflamed, okay? Treatment include resuscitate, resuscitate the patient, IV fluid, nasogastric tube, antibiotics, and all that. All right. So another type is found in what patients that have cirrhosis of the liver with ascites. Okay. So you have liver cirrhosis, you have ascites. Okay. Or if you have a patient that have nephrotic syndrome, okay, and they have all those bacteria, that those back there could be some bacterial infections like what. Ischerichia coli and streptococcus pneumonia, streptococcus fecalis, okay? So that cause the what? Peritoneum to become inflamed, all right? Then talking about the secondary one, this one is basically the cause is outside, right? Another thing is causing, all right? So let's talk about the possible causes. So look at an inflammation of an intra-abdominal organ or viscous can cause what? The secondary peritonitis, okay? Like if there's inflammation of the appendix, that's acute appendicitis, acute sarpingitis, acute cholecystitis, pulpera and post abortal sepsis, it could be what amoebic colitis. Any of these conditions can actually what? Cause um, what do they call it? Yeah, can cause that's inflammation of the organs. Now, because the peritoneum is lining the organs. The peritoneum can become inflamed too, right? Now, if there's perforation of a viscous, you know, most of these organs, they have their content. The gallbladder has the content. Pancreas has their content. Stomach will have all those food contents and all that. So if there's any perforation, these contents can leak into the abdominal cavity, affecting the peritoneum, right? So perforations could include, maybe there's a typhoid perforation. It's peptic ulcer perforation. There's amoebic perforation of the large bowel. There's perforation of the bowel, stomach, uterus, vaginal, bladder, appendix, gallbladder, 
malignant tumor of the intestines. Any one of these can cause a peritonitis. This is because what? The peritoneum is lining. It's lining what? The abdominal structures, right? Then um, another cause could be due to what? Leakage or perforation of an intra-abdominal abscess. So there is an abscess in any of the organs, okay? So the abscess now ruptures or perforates. It could be abscesses in the appendix. It could be pelvic abscess. It could be almoibic liver abscess. It could be tubal ovarian abscess. Any one of these can actually cause what? A peritonitis. Then, if there's intestinal obstruction, we're having things like uh, there's obstruction for a very long time that led to the formation of a gangrene. Okay, gangrene can also spread. Okay, then there could be some bacterial translocation from the bowel right into the what? Peritoneal, peritoneum. Okay, then post operation complication. It could be that they did one or two operations for you, so they didn't actually do it right. So after the operation, you're not, you're not having some what? Um, complications, right? It could be due to, okay, yeah, like the did some anastomosis, so it's now leaking. It could be bowel leakage or anything, right? It could be septicemia. All right. Generally, like, let me say, um, there's like infection of the blood, right? So this can also, blood still goes to the peritoneum, right? So it can cause an infection of the peritoneum. It could be due to penetrating abdominal injuries, like, um, you know, Unlike uh, for the surgery, where you sterilize the patient before you cut, any penetrating abdominal injury can carry bacteria from outside to the inside, okay? So that's a problem. So um, you have examples like with bacterial peritonitis, it's usually mixed. You have infections from Escherichia coli, Streptococcus faecalis, Klebsiella clostrida, it could be Pseudomonas, it could be bacteria, okay? It could be gonococcus. It could be um, infections from cl chlamydia trachomatis. Okay, these ones are usually responsible for uh, pelvic inflammatory disease. All right, and all this can be what types of peritonitis. Just that what they are now subdivided into the primary type and secondary peritonitis. Okay, so that's it.